I love to travel. This spring, I went to Stockholm, London, and Ireland for three weeks. I went alone and absolutely loved it. I visited friends in Stockholm and London, but traveled completely solo in Ireland and had a grand adventure. My journey started in Stockholm. This is Drottingham Palace, where the king, queen, and princess live. I was surprised how much Sweden looked like Minnesota. I traveled 17 hours, and when my friend picked me up and we were on our way to the city, my first exclamation was, no wonder all those Swedes ended up in Minnesota. It looks just like home. The Stockholm Museum of Modern Art was amazing. This is that picture. Stockholm also had the best tap water I've ever tasted. The next leg of my journey was London. The gardens in Hyde Park and the Kensington Palace were exquisite. The green spaces and the amount of parks in London are amazing. Here sits the Queen overlooking the grounds behind Kensington Palace and Hyde Park. Public transportation and walking paths in London are easy to use and really well laid out. I enjoy taking public transportation in all of the different cities that I go to. To be able to see a city or culture from this perspective gives me a better sense of the people around me. There are more adventures to have and to see and more people to meet. I walk as much as I can when I travel, as one never knows what will be just around the corner that, would, that you might have not seen or missed entirely because you were not on a busy street. This church and several more are just such instances. I walked around Notting Hill one afternoon and found the most beautiful churches and architecture on the side streets. While I tend to shy away from group touristy things, I was happy I bought a ticket for the hop-on, hop-off buses through London. It was a great way to see through the city highlights and learn history along the way. One of my favorite things about traveling is the fun or funny and unexpected things that arise. This next slide is an example of that. I took the train from London to Hollyhead, Wales, and then a, a ferry across to Dublin. I went to use the restroom on the train, and when I locked the door, a chipper voice stated to me, as was also on the lid, Please don't f flush nappies, sanitary towels, paper towels, gum, old phones, unpaid bills, junk mail, your ex's sweater, hopes, dreams, or goldfish down this toilet. <laughs> Dry wood on a train. Ah, London. I had to go visit Mr. Oscar Wilde in Dublin. He is sitting in a lovely park named Marion Square, one of my favorite authors and satirists. One of the hotels I stayed at in Dublin put post-it notes on the mirror when they were every morning uh, of notable Irish personalities. The one that was waiting for me upon arrival was from Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. I thought that was good advice. Perfect trip or perfect quote for my solo adventure. I rented a car by myself and drove on the wrong side of the road on the wrong side of the car. I must admit this prospect made me a bit nervous. A nice cabbie settled my nerves and gave me a few pointers on, this, on the ride to pick up my rental. I am also, I'm so glad he took the um, risk. I'm so glad I took the risk and pushed my levels of comfort. The drive was stunning. This is the west side of the Buren, and this stunning beauty is the, cliff of, the Cliffs of Moor. I was able to climb all over the cliffs. I really like Ireland's sense. They are not a litigious society and so do not have fences and do not enter signs all over. There are a few warning signs, but, if you, but you feel free to make your own decisions. If you get cl too close to the edge, that's your own fault. On a side note, if you do go there, be aware the wind can pick you up and toss you off the cliff. So know your footing and pay attention. My soul felt full to the brim from this experience. It was magical and spiritual, and I could only have found this place in myself, traveling by myself. I stayed in Doolin for a couple of days where the Cliffs of Moor are. I took a boat ride to the island of Inish Moor, which is part of the Aran Islands. This boat shipwrecked, which was the last one, in 1960. The ship is just now rust and actually moves about in big storms. This church was built 1,200 years ago. There is a small graveyard around it. It sits in the middle of the island, and it I paid for a tour guide at the suggestion of one of the deckhands, and I'm so glad I did. Inishmore has rich history. It ended up I was all alone with the tour guide, and so he answered all of my questions. And I got to see all the spotlights of the island. I love this image. I took it from inside the church ruins and like the contrast of ancient and modern. One of the things I enjoy most about Europe is the rich history and architecture. It's all valued, treasured, and enjoyed. The Atlantic Ocean around the island looked so beautifully blue. The color reminded me of the Caribbean, but was significantly colder. 
I walked across the beach to the rocks and was able to sit and watch the ocean for a while before I took the boat back to the mainland. Another moment of feeling full to the brim with goodness. I am terribly claustrophobic, but made myself push my limits again to go down and see a 23.5-foot chandelier stalactite coming from the ceiling in Doolin. I am glad I did it, but at the end, I can tell you the top of the stairs and out where the sky was could not come fast enough. This is Drumcliff Church, where William Butler Yeats is buried. It is located just north of Sligo in County Clare. Sligo is fantastic. I brought a stone to Queen Mab at her cairn at the top of the mountain and had the delight of a seaweed bath at Voya, ate fresh seafood for every meal, and walked for miles on the beaches. This bridge is from my walks in Dublin. It is made to look like a huge harp. The city is divided north and south by the River Liffey. Each bridge is a beautiful work of art. Just behind the building on the left was my favorite spot for sushi. Ireland has many immigrants from all over the world, giving it a rich diversity. One of my favorite aspects of my trip were finding these beautiful beaches off the beaten track. Because I pushed my comfort level with driving, I was able to explore and find desolate beaches to walk upon, getting to enjoy all the majesty and being totally by myself. I leave you, well, let's, one, there we are. I leave you with this image of Strand Hill Beach in Sligo. I met amazing people on my journey, some friends as well as interesting characters along the way. Taking this trip on my own was a freeing and wonderful feeling. Of all the people I met and connected with along the way, getting to know myself was the most important part. Thank you very much. <laughs>